Hi everyone, and welcome to my new video. Uh, we just came back from our Kalahari signature event, and now we want to show you all of our cool features that we added on our robot. Stick around as to learn more. Now that we've gotten to a little bit of our intro about the Kalahari event, we will now talk about the features on our robot. Yeah, something really cool about our, our robot is our split gear mechanism. Uh, <laughs> this essentially allows us uh, to have a pneumatics uh, to switch uh, uh, the motor power from the intake uh, to the dump. This allows us uh, to have more motor power on the intake and more motor power on the dump. Speaking of the dump, Jacob can now talk about our lift mechanism. We have this very special lift mechanism which uses chains that lifts a tray which stores all of the blocks. We also have this purple scoring mechanism with this latch that allows us to have three positions instead of the standard two positions the pneumatics would normally give us. We have the starting position, then we have the open position, and then we have the closed position. Now Matt can talk about the intake. So our intake design is fairly standard, however, what some, some people might notice is that we don't have any motors on our intake. This is because of our split gear mechanism. We have an axle that runs out from the split gear mechanism, which is underneath our tray. It comes out and uses chains to go all the way up here and come all the way back down. And we are running with a four and a half to one ratio on our intake. This allows us to have the intake box really, really quickly into our top tray and our bottom tray. Also, we have an expandable intake, which allows us to reach even greater heights. This is because with, with the addition of our extra back, we are not able to be as long, and therefore we must store cubes higher. We are able to store three levels of green inside of our dump, uh, instead of our green tray, which means that this must be higher, which means that the intake must also be higher. The way that this is triggered is that the back tray goes down, and it lifts this up. At the back of the robot, you can see this mold. This mold allows us to go to score at the corner of the goal. From, from previous testing, we've noticed that scoring from the corner has a higher chance of getting level 2 with only four, 4 purple blocks than scoring from the side. Through our 90% chance, both scoring from the side has around a 70% chance of getting level 2. This mold over here allows us to easily score off from the corner of the goal and then come back out. Because we don't need to turn away from the wall. This back mold also allows us to score from all angles of the goal, which is really beneficial for both driving, teamwork, and autonomous routes. One of the most important parts about our robot is the switch mechanism, which provides adequate support for the robot and the ability to go into the supply zone because it switches out like this to help it go in. This year, we also have a very unique autonomous with a self uh, with a cube detection system that adjusts to look at the cubes and then uh, uh, well, along with an anti-jam. We have a detection system, as you can see underneath we have a distance sensor, which we can use to detect the blocks just in case our turn misses the blocks, overturns or turns not enough to make sure we're actually getting the block instead of going somewhere else. Another, system, another thing we have in our robot is the anti-jam system. With the distance sensor, you can see if a flower or a group of blocks is incoming, so we're able to slow down the robot or to outtake if the robot is jammed up or and, and to stop to make sure we are able to get all the blocks into the dumper before intaking more, which can cause the robot to jam up. Also, instead of using brain inertia to, to, to turning, which we have found has a two second delay, we actually use the motor encoders. So we do, a, um, we do a calculation system where we spin the robot 360 degrees and we found out how many motor encoder rotations we need for one degree of turn. And therefore we can apply that to all our turning and accurate turning in our autonomous code. 
Thank you for watching. We hope you learned something and took inspiration from this video and apply it to your future builds. Make sure to share this video with your teammates. And remember to press the LF button to like and subscribe. See you at Worlds! Hi everyone. Got caught in my shirt. This year we have many different things on our auto that make it very efficient. For example, we use many different sensors and our turning and um, cube looking is different than a lot of the other teams. <laughs> also this year we have a very unique auto which uses cube detection algorithms and self-correcting alignment turning. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. It's fine. Nobody will know. We use this advanced jet propulsion system. We're actually a lot of air attacks and robots. <laughs> 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 <laughs>